Lately, I have been absolutely obsessed, full-blown obsessed with the song from Bruno Mars, Leave the Door Open. Not because of TikTok, definitely not because of that, but because of the music, it's amazing. I love that sort of retro sound. And then there's two main music videos for it. One of them's in a studio and the other one is like a live thing. It's amazing. And what I love about it the most is the star filter that they've used. A while ago, I did a video showing you how to make your own mist filter. And you can see that up here. But as soon as I saw that other music video with the star effect, I knew that I had to make my own version of that as well. So. You only need a few things to make this filter. First of all, you'll need a filter. One of those UV protection filters are fine. I recommend getting a few cheap ones to practice on just in case anything goes wrong. But then maybe you could buy some thicker glass ones when you get a bit more comfortable with it. Then you'll need a tungsten carbide tip cutting tool. That's the secret sauce to this whole thing. A thick ruler, I went for a metal ruler. A pencil or pen, some blue tack, and a solid surface that you don't mind like drawing on, like a piece of scrap wood that I had lying around. The actual process of making this filter is really simple, but it's not easy, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. But basically all you have to do, literally just scoring the, the glass filter using the carbide tip cutting knife and making like a crosshatch pattern. That's all there is to it. But obviously there's a few things that you need to consider and a few things that you'll need to do to make sure that the lines are spaced correctly and that it and it's not wobbly and stuff like that. So I do have to just point out that I'm not telling you to do this at home, I'm explaining how I did it. But if you want to go ahead and try it yourself and it goes wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> Terrible at these disclaimers because I can't be serious. If you do try this, please be careful because this is glass. I don't want you cutting yourself or having any injuries. This is me telling you not to do this at home. I think that's all I have to legally say. <laughs> And as well, nothing will beat the professionally made products because they're probably laser cut to get those precise lines, but it will give you a good starting point and it's a bit fun. And especially if you're on a budget and you can't afford to buy one of the proper ones. Now to start with, I drew a grid on the wooden surface and I spaced the lines three millimeters apart. Any any smaller than three mil or any bigger than three mil, you're gonna get a slightly different effect. I mean, I guessed that, but looking at the other Starburst filters online, I sort of eyeballed it and thought it was gonna be about three mil. And that probably gives you the best spacing. If you, if you have them more spaced down, you're obviously gonna get less of that effect. So it's up to you, you can space them out further or closer together whatever you want, ha experiment with it and see which one you like best. And that grid is basically a guide for me to follow whilst I'm cutting the filter. And then I know everything's gonna be evenly spaced and nice and straight. I then secured the filter to that wooden board using blue tack. I just meant that it's not gonna be sliding around all over the place and it's gonna stay where it is whilst I'm doing it. Then place your ruler over the grid that you've drawn and then following the guide that you've made, cut each line using the tungsten carbide cutting tool. Yeah, basically until you've done all the lines and you've got that nice crosshatch pattern. 
you got to be careful because you don't want to go too deep because you'll end up cracking the filter. Obviously, because I've used cheap ones, they're very thin, so you've got to be very careful. But if you don't go deep enough, you're going to not get the right effect. And make sure that you only slice it once and put enough pressure on to make the cut deep enough, but you don't want it to be thick. So don't go over it a bunch of times and try and make that line nice and even. You don't want to do any stop starts because you'll end up with like a, a blob of light when the, when the light hits the lens and you don't want that. So when it comes to the lights, you want to make sure that whatever lights you're using are as bright as possible and also take, well you can see it at the moment how bright that is, but take off any softbox or diffusion you've got because you want the natural light source as bright as you can. And that's what will get those super bright reflections off the glasses. Come in on. So any reflections on the glasses will shine through nice and bright. So I'm using, t or I've actually gone for one Godox light at the moment, the SL150 Mark II, I think it's 150. Yeah. And then a couple of lights in the background just to get some more flare off of those as well. And that's it. So I actually tested it using my phone torch light to begin with. And this is the effect look, if I just hold the filter up, there you go. You can see it works really well. Look at that. But when I was trying to do it with shiny objects, for example this, it kind of works, look you can see it slightly but you need that extra brightness so take the softbox off I ordered three filters I actually got two of the Amazon basics ones I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check them out yourselves they're under 10 pounds and then also this pen flex one just because they were cheap you don't have to go for these ones but I got cheap ones to practice on because if it went wrong I didn't want to have had to spend a load of money but the glass is thinner and what I've noticed is when you're cutting it it flexes so you've got to be very careful you can't get as deep as you'd like because you can end up cracking it which I did <laughs> My initial idea for this was to use fishing wire because there's a load of like animal make your own anamorphic lens videos out there and they use fishing line and the thinner the better apparently. You, but you need like a cross hatch effect and I thought that's going to be really tricky and messy to do with loads of strips of fishing wire. So then I thought if I just cut into the glass using a Stanley knife, pops to the rescue once again. When I told him that idea, he had this. It's a tile and glass cutter. Now the tip of it is made out of tungsten carbide. So what you can also do is, because it's a thread on filter, always forget to turn these on. So, sorry about that, the video looks different. So I've got the filter on, here's my, can you see that look? This is where that bump is and you get that, you don't want that. So that's why you need to make sure your lines are precise. You can kind of get away with it depending on what you're doing. Like if it's over there, look, it looks okay. So because this is on a filter thread, you can actually choose whether you want it to be parallel or diagonal. So that looks quite cool as well, to be fair. But I went for the parallel just because I was trying to emulate what was happening in that Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack video. But look at that, that is awesome. So I've used these glasses, they're actually homemade and they look great don't they? Stoned. What do you think? I love them, very Elton John. Very Elton <laughs> That's what we're going for, Elton John. <laughs> if you're watching Elton, what do you think? <laughs> so the reason why we've gone with the glasses is because if we're just using lights in the background and getting those stars, it's, it can be too much sometimes. So the glasses is just like a nice, subtle thing. A 
few other things that I want you to experiment with are the camera settings. Now, I did notice a huge difference when changing the shutter speed. If you raise your shutter speed, you actually get more emphasis on that effect and it shows up even more, so that's great. But because it's like a retro look, I didn't want that high shutter speed. So I tried it with a lower shutter speed for a smooth motion blur. You can probably get away with going to around 1 over 30 to get the nice motion blur, but you but then it's harder to get those stars. So find a nice middle ground. I went for 1 over 50 in the end because it was a good save point and actually it looked alright. And also your f-stop. Just have a play around and see what works best. I think I filmed this at f5.6, something like that, and it worked really well. So the issues that I had were, I think the lines are too thick. So you wanna make sure that your tool is as sharp as possible. Get the lines nice and thin and go quite deep, but not too deep so that you snap your filter. Like I did, I actually did it twice. These are both a crack down the middle. If you try it, enjoy. I hope you have fun with it, I hope it works. Let me know in the comments below if you do try it and how you get on with it. But again, please be careful if you do do it. Don't hurt yourself. Don't ruin your stuff. Rule number one, don't ruin anything, please. Don't buy a load of expensive stuff and ruin it. And don't do this on your lens either. Crikey me. Thanks so much for watching. Bit of fun. I love doing stuff like this because I'm always excited to see the results. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>